Good morning, good evening, hello, and welcome to everyone to our 12th IUC Alumni Talks. Um, for those of you who are returning, welcome back. And for those of you who are new, welcome. We're delighted to have you here today, and we appreciate your taking the time to attend today's event. Before we begin, I would just like to quickly ask everyone to please mute yourselves. And if you could please add your IUC graduation year to your display name, we'd really appreciate it especially if you have the time to stay for our networking event after the talk. Speaking of that networking event, um, here's a quick rundown of tonight's schedule. Um, we're gonna first introduce tonight's speaker, to today's speaker, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the East Coast USA, um, followed by moderator-led conversation. We have a fun little interactive prepared before our Q&A, and lastly, the wrap up. Um, after that, we have an optional post-event networking session, and I hope to be able to talk to some of you guys today. Um, now, a short introduction from each of our current organizing members. I'll start. My name is Megan Beckridge. I'm part of IUC's class of 2020. I'm currently working for a professional association where I act as a liaison to the Japanese partners. Or, um, Karen. Um, me. Hi, everyone. I'm Tarani. I graduated in 19. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate at Stanford University. Nice to meet you. I'll pass it to Mariah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mariah Zong, and I graduated from uh, the University of Cambridge last year uh, with a MPhil in Japanese studies. Uh, I'm a current student at IUC, and after IUC, I will be going back to Cambridge to do my PhD. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, hope you can hear me. This is uh, Richard Sloboda, uh, graduated in 2003. Uh, I currently work at uh, KPMG Japan uh, in the accounting field. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, doing, uh, uh, working with uh, fellow IUCers to these happy hours and you know, uh, alumni talks for the past couple of years. And I'm in the middle of a bike ride and I hope you can see, I can't see the screen, but I hope you can see the sky trees. So, <laughs> thank you, have a fun. One session. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, before <laughs> I relinquish the mic to Mariah for the rest of the event, I'd like to take a quick moment to talk about the purpose of this event. Our goal is to bring together the IUC community and showcase the accomplishments of our distinguished alumni. Our past speakers, we've had speakers from a wide variety of fields, we have alumni working in the government, international relations, the brewing industry, children's literature translation. Our last speaker works at the Metropolitan Museum of Art as a curator. Um, so we're just happy to have this opportunity to showcase the incredible career paths everyone has gone down. So with that, I will finally hand the mic to Mariah. So please take us away. Thank you very much, Megan. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Milek Odabasi, a uh, associate professor of world literature at Simon Fraser University. Her expertise lies in modern Japanese literature, translation theory, and world children's literature. She has taught at universities in Canada, the US, and Japan, and, and she's currently a visiting professor at Sofia University in Tokyo, working on a book manuscript about transnational influence on modern Japanese children's literature. Melek, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Let's get started. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with my first question. Actually, most of us from IUC have had some experience with Japan or its culture during our early years, such as childhood or high school. How about you, Melek? Could you share with us your first experience with Japan and what sparked your interest in Japanese culture? Um, well, first of all, thanks everybody for coming today. It's really nice to, to see some familiar and some new faces. Um, yeah, so I was in <clears throat> Australia for part of my childhood. And um, this is of course during the, um, the 80s and the it's the, the bubble economy and all of that stuff. But of course I didn't realize that until much, much later. <laughs> so my two major um, experiences of and memories of Japan as a, as a child and as a teenager are one, Hello Kitty, very important. I collected very stickers. <laughs> and two, um, 
I, I, um, I played a Suzuki piano for many oh, years. Yeah. So, um, you know, I followed the Suzuki method, which is memory based and, um, you know, it has a set repertoire. And uh, so those were my two impressions of Japan. I don't have any family connections or anything like that. So, and mm -hmm. of course, I started learning um, Japanese in high school because Japan um, was buying up everything in Australia and the Australians were terrified. So, <laughs> but, you know, in a, in a bit of a forward thinking uh, policy, they decided to um, encourage uh, Australian high schools to teach Japanese. And so I was the beneficiary of that. Oh, wow. Um, actually, coming from Australia myself, <laughs> um, I, I, I understand a few years ago, but probably back in um, your days, Japanese was not the most popular language oh, at, at high school. No, nope. probably. No, yeah. not at all. I mean, well, it was just starting. It was just starting, I think. Um, and I mean, certainly the crowd that was attracted in high school, at least, was drawn by what little they knew of Japanese food or Japanese culture. But, um, you know, but there was no wide availability of manga or anime or anything like that. Right. So it was motivated yeah. by other things. And um, the people who went on to study with me in college, many of them were interested in business. Oh, wow. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. So, so what did you end up doing in college? What, what did you? What was your major? Well, I went to um, UC Berkeley, and mm -hmm. I had started, you know, Japanese language in high school. And my mom encouraged me to continue that. So I did. I I, I listened to my mom. So you know, I did that. <laughs> but um, at first, I thought I wanted to be um, a forest ranger or something like. That. Oh I mean, wow! We were all OT eight. We were all seventeen once, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I I um, declared as political economy of natural resources, mm -hmm. um, but then after my first year, switched to comparative literature. Oh wow! Because that's really okay, who from I am. far stranger to uh, compare literature. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't take long. I took one course in economics to realize I was like, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> so. Um, uh, did you actually get to visit Japan um, at that time? No, I did not. Um, um, oh, wow. as we, yeah, as we discussed, I um, I did not get to go to Japan until I went to the IUC. Um, I didn't okay. have, my family did not have the cash. Mm -hmm. And you know, this was back in the days before um, the internets, you know, so there was no easy way of finding um, sources mm -hmm. of funding and that sort of thing, even though there probably were, <laughs> right? But, I mean, you know, still, yes, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, my family and I were not savvy about that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. no, I did not go um, to Japan yeah. before I went to the IUC. Yeah, I, I very much relate to the, you know, resource thing. <laughs> um, so how then how did you feel about the fact that you just jumped directly into study on your first visit? Visit Because you just your first visit was actually going to IUC and study. Can you can you tell us a bit more about your experience? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was great. I mean, I had just earned my master's degree mm -hmm. and um, I had just gotten married. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I've been my family moved a lot as when I was a kid. So I think I was just used to. All right. Here we are in a new place. Let's mm -hmm. do what we need to do. Um, wow. And obviously, the IUC offered some support, right? I mean, it, I wasn't just, you know, um, yeah. uh, you know, the apartment had been arranged, and you know, they. I remember they mm -hmm. gave us a bunch of um, things ahead of time uh, for, you know, glossaries and um, easy phrases, you know, for negotiating <laughs> the airport and whatnot. So, um, oh, so wow. I was okay in that respect, yeah. Um, but as far as sort of being plunged into an intensive language program, I mean, I, I love it. So I know there were, I know some of my peers found it annoying um, mm -hmm. to be sort of thrust back into, uh, um, some of them described it as a high school-like setting. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, after struggling through my master's and, you know, the sort of the existential <laughs> <laughs> demands that occur, that a uh, um graduate study in the humanities anyway puts on you I was like tell me what to do it's good 
I'll sit here for <laughs> hours studying my kanji. It's great. So, so you you enjoyed the language learning part, um, you know, despite the fact that yeah, it was no, a regular program. Oh Absolutely. wow! Yeah, no, no, I I actually enjoy that. Um, it's sort of uh -huh. a break from um, the machinations of my own mind, shall we say? You know, and all the <laughs> things I'm telling myself to do. So, um, yeah, no, it's it's nice. Um, yeah, normally I'm not a person who um, likes having structure imposed on her. I mean. You know, I'm just not that person, but for some reason, language learning um, works well with how I think. Oh, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I would love to hear more about that. Um, you actually got the, the award for most improved. That's very impressive. <laughs> I worked hard, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I, I didn't know such reward actually existed. Nobody yeah, I think, it's, it. I think it's the Hayase Moriyama prize is oh, what wow. it's called yeah I don't know if it still exists but I appreciated that you know um because yeah. I had you know since it was my first visit uh, this was before the internet you know I didn't have online buddies or I didn't watch anime you know I didn't have ways of practicing my Japanese with anyone right you know except mm -hmm. in class mm -hmm. so um it was all in there you know mm -hmm. but I hadn't been using it so I think it's in a way not surprising that I was the most improved because really, I think I just learned how to activate all the things that I had learned until then. I mean, I mean obviously you have a gift, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know, but thank you. <laughs> um, so, well, do you have any sort of like memorable experience from your IUC year? Maybe could you share with us? Um, well, they're the, they're the shareable the ones and, and the non-shareable ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shareable ones and non-shareable ones. Um, I would say that uh, <laughs> yeah, in the in the classroom, mm -hmm. I think um, well, as I mentioned before, my favorite teacher was Tani Sensei. Mm -hmm. And um, she's also the one who introduced me to Tono Monogatari, which got me started on my dissertation topic. Like I I I think I mentioned to her, I mean, remember this is a long time ago. <laughs> I don't remember everything, but um, I think I mentioned to her my interest in folklore and mm -hmm. um, she said oh well then you should read Tono Monogatari and I'm like what you know <laughs> and so that's how I started on that topic and that is also what ended up being my presentation topic as well so I think that's my fondest memory um, funniest memory was one day uh, we were in the the building near in Minato Mirai, sort of next to what I like to call the Gyoza building, which is of course oh, wow. meant to be a sailboat, but I call it the Gyoza building because that's what it reminds me of. And um, the uh, there was one, there was a hallway, and then there was the staff room, and then there, so so you could go one and two ways. Anyway, one day I come into the hallway and. The sensei, three senseis are all rushing from different directions, you know, to, to go to some classroom or a meeting, I don't know what. And they bumped into each other and at full speed. <laughs> and then, of course, what ensued was the the bowing, the bowing oh, fest. And yes, this yes. was the first time I had witnessed it, and I found it just incredibly well entertaining. And and they were just everybody was all the teachers were so kind and so nice. And I just I don't know, I just really appreciated that a lot. Um, outside of the classroom, I would say that I, I have met some of my dearest friends that I still have at IUC. And um, actually one of them just came to visit me. Um, oh, so wow. she's from Belgium. And mm -hmm. actually I will, I will be introducing um, her to you because she's also a very cool person um, and I think would be a great guest to have. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is, um, uh, she actually came to visit me a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So th these are friendships that have um, stuck around for, you know, yeah, years and years and um, ones that I will keep for the rest of my life. So I would say those are my fondest memories. Yeah. You see, I, I can totally relate to that because wherever I go, I, I find that people, uh, people are the most important thing. Uh, yes. no matter what journey I take the people that I meet they are the they're the things that make make my life amazing 
Mm-hmm. That's, that's how I feel about no matter where I go. Um, that's that's right. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, no, I mean, I'm not going to tell you I remembered the, you know, how we declined verbs, you know, <laughs> or, I mean, no, I mean, obviously, it's the experience yeah, it's the I had of the people. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. So I understand that you actually um, directly uh, went to do a, to your PhD program after IUC. Is is that right? Oh, yes, wow. that's correct. Oh wow! So you didn't actually take any detours along the way or whatever. It's, you just decided. No, no. I mean, I took a brief detour. Well, okay. So I, as I mentioned, I mean, certainly if you do um, literature. Most Mm -hmm. people don't do an MA in literature. It's not like a, you know, usually considered the terminal degree. So if you're accepted into a program, it's kind of assumed um, for better or worse, right? You know, that you will do a PhD. And that was my assumption as well, luckily. So, (laughs) but so I left after my master's um, and did the program. Mm -hmm. And then I took a year off after that um, Mm -hmm. because my spouse was working um, you know, you know, it was his turn, you know, to do something. And, um, and then, um, but I was always going to go back. So I guess you could call it a two-year detour, including Mm -hmm. IUC and a year off. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, but I didn't really think, you know, I didn't go and get a job or, you know, Mm -hmm. do something else for a while. Mm -hmm. So yes, I actually Mm -hmm. did it with, very few detours. Um, I also mm-hmm. started grad school very early, um, mm-hmm. right after undergrad. Um, I don't know. I mean, if if anyone wants the advice, I would say don't do that because you'll probably a bit more you'll be a bit more mature and know a bit more um, about how to do things <laughs> if you take a little bit of time in between. But mm-hmm. um, I survived. I survived. Um, But yeah, yeah. but I would say, no, I've always been sort of very, okay, this is what I'm doing. That's where I'm going. It's getting done. (laughs) You you know, actually, you didn't just survive. You you thrived, you know. (laughs) Well, okay, thank you. So many books. (laughs) I did the things. I did the things, yes. You thrived. (laughs) Um, So um, you, you you published so many books and journal articles throughout your career, and um, this time you are in Yokohama working on a manuscript. Um, so how has your research interest so, sort of involved, evolved um, mm. since you um, embarked on your PhD program? Yeah, I mean, I think probably um, this is probably a little different from a lot of people. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not the kind of person who can work on the same thing for their entire career. Um, and it's it's kind of funny because my um, my colleagues here in Japan, the ones who work on Yanag- Yanagida Kunio, they're like, wait, you're working on this now? And I was like, yeah, why why not? You know, <laughs> I should be working on Yanagida until the day I die. It's like, thanks. No, we had a great relationship. <laughs> He's a good guy, but, you know, I'm moving on. So um, I. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I think also as a complet person, my my interests tend to be broad, um, mm-hmm. but um, it is all connected. And um, mm-hmm. the the work on Yanagida sort of led me to um, children's literature in one way, in the sense that he worked on he actually wrote some books for kids late in his career mm-hmm. um, because he was concerned with. Um, uh, post-war education and educating children in the new mm. political context. Mm. And then um, the my work on um, women's writers was actually um, sparked by my teaching uh, because I first worked, um, I was teaching Meiji women writers. And of course I was using um, Rebecca Copeland's book. And mm. I said, you know, I, I wrote to her email. And I said, you know, these great texts, interesting texts that you mentioned in your book, I'd love to assign them, but none of them have been translated. Mm-hmm. And um, and she said, oh, yeah, sorry about that. But uh, and I said, well, what if we did that? And she said, well, you could do it. I said, oh, no, I'm not doing this alone. You're the expert. <laughs> so that's how I got into um, doing that. And um, oh. I couldn't have asked for a better senpai to do that project with. But mm-hmm. of course, working on 
um, women's writers, um, because mm -hmm. women were, of course, being um, directed to become good wives and wise mothers um, and mm -hmm. to concern themselves in an appropriate way, of course, about the education of their children. Mm -hmm. That was also something that I encountered. Children's literature was also something I encountered in doing that project. So mm -hmm. as Indra knows, of course, you know, um, we uh, worked together on, um, I contributed something to her to her project on children's literature and translation. And so that's sort of, so the combination of the two things kind of led me to my new topic. Oh, wow, wow. And, and do, you, do you think IUC, the year at IUC actually helped a lot during that process? Um, well, this is this all happened afterwards, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, I I couldn't have done I couldn't be operating at the level I am without the mm -hmm. training I received at IUC. It's sort of it. It's not like I I got all the training I needed in one year. That wasn't it. It was more like mm -hmm. it made everything gel that I had done thus far and gave me confidence to. Mm -hmm. Um, to build on my skills and sort of a knowledge about how I could do that myself, right? Mm. So yeah. that I, that's what I would say. Yeah, I, I, you know, I haven't even started my PhD yet. I already have that confidence because this year, um, so far, I have learned so much from all my classes. Not gonna lie, they're painful sometimes. <laughs> you know, homework and everything, but I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. And, and I'm very, really, really confident, um, especially after, you know, hearing everything from you, I am now even more confident. Good. You should. <laughs> so yeah, well, there's no reason to feel, um, you know, <clears throat> there's, there is no reason to feel imposter syndrome. Okay. You know, I mean, if you're not learning along the way, then mm -hmm. you're doing it wrong. And will mm -hmm. you ever know everything? Nope. <laughs> so just keep going. Just keep going. Thank you. Just, you know, yeah. like Dory would say, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's really the only way to do it. It really is. And if someone, yeah, that... and if you get criticism, if you get, mm -hmm. you know, um, then you're, you know, at first it hurts, but then you just sort of think, okay, well, what can I get out of this? And how can I get to the place where I want to be? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I still do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that is that is really fascinating. Um, so you you mentioned that you started teaching and that sort of um helped you find your new interest. And I you told you told us that you really enjoy teaching. Um, I do. Yeah. So um, you know, as a Japanese learner yourself, and a professor who actually interacts with a lot of eager students. Um, you know, on both sides of the Pacific, you know, from many different backgrounds and, and countries. What are your impressions of um, university students in Japan and students in the U.S. and Canada, for example? Do you, do you think <clears throat> they're different or do, do, they, do they actually share things in common? Because hmm. coming from a, you know, multicultural background yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to complicate this, of course, because I am unable to make um, blanket statements about mm -hmm. students in any one country, you know, or any, yeah, even any one institution. Yeah. But um, yeah. I will say that, OK, so I have in my career taught exclusively at in, mm -hmm. in departments um, with undergraduate programs only. All right. So my first job was at a private um, liberal arts college. And then mm -hmm. I moved to SFU, which is a mm -hmm. public university. Um, it's large, but our department only has undergrad students and we are not, we don't have language majors. In fact, we're, we're developing the language program right now, but um, I have taught literature courses my entire career. So I count myself lucky, <laughs> actually, as far as that goes. Um, <clears throat> here at Sophia, um, obviously, I teach at a pretty exclusive place, um, and the student body is about half um, exchange students and half um, regular matriculated Japanese students. Um, mm -hmm. Compared to my home university, um, the, it's 
I don't think Sophia is as big. I'm not sure what the what the student count is, but my home university is 25,000 students. Um, but I would say many of them um, come are first generation university students. Um, many of them are there um, because their parents want them to get a good job, right? Mm -hmm. They are not there for a quote unquote liberal arts education, nor do they know what that is. Um, mm -hmm. Here, obviously at Jochi, again, different context and sort of a kind of a split down the middle, um, but mm -hmm. I teach in English as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so impressions. Mm -hmm. I am surprisingly popular at Sophia um, because of the topic that I teach. Um, okay, I am more popular here. <laughs> well, thank you. But I'm more, well, popular in the sense that I get more students than I do at home because there is mm -hmm. no... Um, set audience at home of uh, Japanese language or Japanese culture students, right? So I'm, I'm selling myself more as um, a literature professor. And of course, you know, uh, immigrant parents who are worried about their child's future are not going to tell them to study literature. Yeah, I think we all know that. Um, yeah, however that. wrong that is, because it gives you important skills that translate into the workplace, um, they, they do not advise it, right? So um, they're all, the, the majority of SFE students are looking for pre-professional skills. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a difference in culture. It's a difference in what the students um, are prepared for. It's mm -hmm. also a difference in entitlement, right? Mm -hmm. So I like I said, I don't think I can make a generalization. Um, I would say my impression of Sophia students is um, that, let's see, it's the usual bell curve. So you have the ones mm -hmm. who are just really great and the mm -hmm. ones that are, you know, fine. And then, mm -hmm. well, you know, the ones at the bottom who are either don't care or aren't prepared. Um, mm -hmm. No big difference there. And um, I think the thing that they all share at home or here is mm. the students um, who really are into it, mm. they actually find it life-changing. And not because of me, not because of me. Okay, maybe a little bit because of me, because I'm presenting. I'm sure. You know, I'm sure. But, um, <laughs> they, they find, they learn things about themselves mm. in the process, mm. right? So um, I guess that would be the one slight difference here um, more than at home, um, because I had a lot of um, students who were hapa, you know, mm. uh, or pikokushijo, you know, the, those mm. kinds of students. Um, and some of the Japanese students too, um, I taught texts about Japanese internment in the mm. US and Canada and Japanese American life and, you know, history and all this kind of stuff. And they said they had no idea about any of that, mm. that they thought it was really important. Mm. So, you know, um, I know that's was sort of a roundabout way of answering your question, but but yeah. yeah. Totally. Well, that that is fascinating. I mean, I mean, I mean, when 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 you're talking about a culture or you know an area, people tend to simplify things. But it it is. Thank you for you know highlighting that it's actually not as you know simple as everybody else thinks. So thank you so much. I mean, you have had such an amazing career, and you have done so many amazing things. Um, <laughs> Truly admire you for that. Um, what is the one highlight of your career that you're particularly proud of? Oh, okay. Well, um, I mean, I'm, I mean, sure, there, I'm sure there are many. <laughs> well, I'm proud of my own research, but I'm not going to talk about that because, I mean, that's that's something we all do. And yeah. um, <clears throat> I would say that my proudest moment was uh, building a department. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, it was it was harrowing. It was it nearly killed me. <laughs> but um, I'll spare you the 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 um, instant. I'm sure Indra can relate <laughs> institutional details and whatnot of uh, how such things happen, because it's rarely out of um, progressive and innovative thinking and more about, um, well, what can we do with what's left? Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe Stanford is different, but I'm sure it is actually. But um, 
uh, basically I was left with fragments, um, holding mm -hmm. the fragments of a couple of different programs. And, um, but luckily there was a forward thinking Dean who allowed me to make something out of it. Um, and so we were a world literature program that had been stuffed inside another department. And then there was a free floating um, language um, training institute which you know didn't really live up to the name, but was um, a bunch of very devoted language instructors who had been kicked around the university for decades, mm. and um, took years. It took me five years to do, mm. and um, but I made a department out of those two units, and mm. we were founded founded <laughs> you know mm. in January 2020, mm. and we're still going strong. And um, I think I learned so much. In that process, mm. um, I learned that I am best as a wartime general. Mm. <laughs> Just do it, people. You know. <laughs> so I'm not about the hand holding, but I get the mm -hmm. stuff done. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did learn at the same time. I did learn a lot about. Okay, you know. I mean, you need to listen to people. You need to understand where they're coming from. You need mm -hmm. to, um, mm -hmm. in order to make something fly. You know, yeah. you can't just order people around, you know, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and that's what had been happening to most of us mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at the institution. Mm -hmm. And so it was um, a very difficult role of trying to, on the one hand, find the thread, th find the path through and forge mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, do it as a group and make sure mm -hmm. that people were on board. Mm. And and I mean that was we don't get training for any of that in academia no, and yeah, um, no. or really anywhere else probably but mm. um, I'm I'm particularly proud of that. Oh wow! I mean, because you mentioned you you are you're better at being a wartime general, and that just sort of you know uh, brings me to my next question. <laughs> oh, um, first of all, <laughs> I have to thank you. For um, for what you have done last year, um, because I'm pretty sure without oh. you, um, most of the IUC students uh, from my cohort wouldn't have been able to come to Japan. Um, so, um, uh, in 2021, uh, when you were when you got your um, research fellowship, I think mm -hmm, yeah. you came to Japan, the Japan and, Foundation. Yeah, yeah, you were you're planning to bring your children with you. But due to the Omicron, the Japanese government suddenly just decided to close the borders again and you were stuck without them. And you launched a change work petition and ultimately got quite a few, quite some attention. Um, so can you can you tell us a bit more about that? I'm, well, you're giving you, me too much credit. To do it and how you actually went around and, and, and did it, just got things yeah. done. Well, you're giving me too much credit. I mean, there, there, it was a group. It was a group effort. Um, so, as I as I mentioned to y'all before, I mean, what happened was, um, it, well, it was a bait and switch situation where um, the Japan Foundation. At first, I had to come. Excuse me, I had to come alone, and I was a little bit concerned about that. Um, mm -hmm. But they said, I'm sure we can be, we can come up with something and the kids will come. And then Omicron came down and they went back on it again. I mean, and I had planned everything and, you know, I mean, this, this doing anything with children, mm -hmm. I mean, doing anything like this alone, let alone with children is a huge mm -hmm. investment. I mean, mm -hmm. I lose money every time I come here. Okay. You know, this is not uh grants aside. I mean, I'm still losing money. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, the boys, the, my youngest, the school and everything, it was throwing everything off. Plus the government told me I couldn't have my kids. And that was the part where I was like, oh no, that is not going to work with me because I'm not going to put up with it. So I started, to, yeah, hell no, you know, really. Um, and so I started yelling on Twitter. <laughs> And those of you know, if no, if you know me on Twitter, you know I will yell sometimes on Twitter. Um, um, but I was really angry about this. I'm like, nope, I am not going to take this lying down, and y'all better watch out because I'm mad. So um, 
I started getting a ton of followers. It was one of those weird viral moments. And um, the other thing, um, so um, the other thing that happened is that the staff of change.org Japan saw my post Mm -hmm. and they had already been working on a petition um, by my friend, um, Arai Takashi, who is now my friend. I didn't know him at the time, um, Mm -hmm. whose wife was stuck in Germany. Right, so he was working on the the spousal um, partner mm-hmm. separation issue because that was also mm-hmm. affected by the travel ban. So um, change.org said, okay, we'll we'll help you launch a petition, and mm-hmm. why don't you join it up with Arai Sons, and mm-hmm. why don't you all work together? And we did. Mm-hmm. We made a great team. Um, he's an artist and a, a videographer, and mm-hmm. so he's also working on a video about this about this whole mm-hmm. topic. And um, then we were also joined by a couple of other people who were working on the same spousal separation issue. Mm -hmm. Um, One of them who chose to remain anonymous, but he is very knowledgeable about government policy. Mm. And the change.org people are also very familiar with running these campaigns, right? So I couldn't have done it without any of all of these people. I was happy to be the face or whatever, but, you Mm. know, um, it was a whole thing. But we did meet several times. We we worked out press releases. We appeared on TV, and mm-hmm. uh, after we gathered our what was it, fifteen thousand? I can't remember how many signatures it was, but a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, the change.org people made an appointment for us to meet officials at the Gaimushal. Mm-hmm. And wow. so yeah, so I put on my I put on my formal clothes and I went to the Gaimushal. A lot of lot of guys in black suits rushing around the building. I I never understand why people would want to study political science, but anyway. um, (laughs) But yeah, so we went in there. We had our meeting for another day. (laughs) That's for another day. Yeah, but um, but uh, the interesting thing was that just prior to that final meeting where we presented our signatures, my um, desperate calls to various um, institutions associated with me. So, um, Japan foundation, the Japanese consulate in Vancouver and Mm. the Canadian, um, embassy in Tokyo. I had hooked all three of them together and I said, do something. Mm. (laughs) And they did what they did. I don't know, but they did something. Um, Mm. and, um, when we were at the Gaimu show, The person we were meeting with was the guy who actually signed my emergency request for the children. Right. So, um, so we didn't change the policy, but Mm -hmm. we did, I think what we can, and this is, this is how political change works. It's never one one single Mm -hmm. thing. It isn't. Mm -hmm. Um, But we managed to bring enough publicity to the issue that I think mm-hmm. it changed the tide, started changing the tide of public opinion, which is yeah. what the politicians were listening to mm-hmm. in terms of their decision making about yeah. the ban. Um, mm-hmm. So and it wasn't just us either. It was also, of course, the economic difficulties that the travel mm-hmm. ban was causing for businesses. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I think we brought the human angle to it, right? Because yes. the other thing that happened um, when I, because I said, I talked about everything on Twitter, what was happening and mm-hmm. what we were doing. Mm-hmm. I got so many uh, student followers suddenly mm-hmm. who were like, sensei, help us, help us, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I, I'm doing what I can. You know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a superhero, but, yeah. um, but it but was so... Are. Well, thank you, but I'm just, I appreciate it, but I honestly, I, the way I operate maybe as a wartime general is just, if I see a problem that I have some kind of power to do something about, Mm -hmm. then I will try to take the actions that I am capable of taking in order to change that. But it never is never just one person. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was a combination of things that finally led the Japanese government and their hidebound ways to change the policy, which, mm-hmm. um, as we pointed out, was purely xenophobic at this at this point. I mean, it, yeah. the policy was not keeping COVID out. Um, yeah. I mean, it was everywhere. And yeah. so the, there was all the testing instituted at the airport and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So 
to mm -hmm. um, refuse visas and to um, separate families mm -hmm. was really, I mean, unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Wow, that, that is really great advice. Um, I guess that sort of like leads to my last question because, you know, um, well, there's no <laughs> easy way to ask it. So I'll just ask you. Um, yeah. As a woman, I'm sure you have experienced a lot of challenges throughout your life and your career. Um, can, you, can you share with us um, what sort of challenges that you had, um, first of all, as a woman in general, mm. and then um, as a mother? Yeah. And, yeah. and is there any advice that you could give us, um, you know, younger women or, you know, yeah. have men listening to what we just said? <laughs> yeah. If, if, if they listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fellas, listen up. Um, don't let the women do everything because I'm tired of it. I really am. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the other thing is, um, this isn't advice yet. I'm getting to the advice part. Okay. <laughs> um, but um, the, uh, yeah, service is something that I have done way too much of. And it is a function. Um, I think because of how I carry myself, um, and I don't take crap from anyone, honestly. Um, I think most men know um, mm -hmm. not to give it, not to try it with me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's just, I think it's just, um, honestly, it's natural. I, I just, mm -hmm. that's just how I am. <laughs> I, I like to credit my, my Turkish dad for that attitude. It's like, <laughs> if you have a Turkish dad, no other man's going to scare you after that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. No, no. That, that, yeah. I mean, I love my dad. My dad loved me, but he was one scary dude. So, um, yeah. Good luck, guys. You aren't going to scare me. Um, however, um, because of, um, but however, if you want community, if you want an institution to run properly, um, you ask the women. Hmm. They're the ones who are going to do the work. Um, I've learned that. I know, hashtag, not all men, but generally speaking, that is how it rolls, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have observed the people who make real change are usually women and, mm -hmm. you know, not straight men <laughs> and, and other genders, right? It's usually not the straight, cis, white men who do the stuff because, yeah, well, there it is. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice, about that. Um, first of all, in your personal choices, don't settle for less in a partner. Um, I, my, my marriage ended in a rather disastrous fashion that I'm not going to share here. Um, also a very unusual fashion, not the standard mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I did have a supportive partner for mm -hmm. many years, um, supportive at least in terms of my career and um, sort of running the household. Um, so, you know, he was acceptable in those, in those ways, um, not in others, but what I would say is be very careful about your choice of partner if that's something you mm -hmm. wanna do. Um, mm -hmm. Second thing is uh, children mm -hmm. are lovely. They are a lot of work. They are a lot of work. They are their own people um, and uh, they will not support your career. <laughs> <laughs> it's not their job. It's not their job to support. Yeah, Indra's laughing. He's like, no, they don't, right? Okay, you know, they are, they care about themselves because they're little kids. And yeah, I mean, like this morning, I was just like, you tell me now you want to go to daycare before I go into this meeting, which means I need to make you a lunch. And you know, like, and and then he's like, oh, but they don't have a microwave at daycare. And I'm like, I don't freaking care. This is gonna be a non-microwavable lunch. Stop complaining, <laughs> you know, any, and then he's like, I'll, you know, talking, right? So, I mean, snapshot, right? I mean, that that's how it yeah. is, you know, right? Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, Mwah, bye, <laughs> go. <laughs> um, but, um, but I think the, the, so don't settle for less. Be careful about the kid thing. They're lovely, but they are a lot of work. And um, lastly, 
I think mm, a good general piece of advice is uh, don't care too much about what other people think. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's blanket advice, but I think I think it's important. It, it extends from everything to saying no to things mm. that you have to say that you really, in order to keep your own sanity, have to say no to. Um, mm. To um, uh, doing what you want to do mm. and not feeling bad about it, mm. right? So even somebody like me who generally carries herself a bit like a guy. Mm. Um, I mean, I've been made to feel like, oh, you know, you should do this or you really, you should yeah. do that. Or mm. just seeing a situation where I'm like, if no one else does something, it's going to mm. fall apart if I mm. don't step in, mm. right? Yeah. And sometimes you just got to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. Um, wow. I don't claim to have all the answers. I honestly don't. Um, yeah. Everyday parenting, I have three boys. Mm -hmm. they're all different <laughs> they all have their own needs yeah. I don't claim to be an authority mm -hmm. on parenting I'm sure there are a lot of things I could be doing better um mm -hmm. be more patient <clears throat> but, but no I, I, I I've seen your you know very brief interaction with your child and and that was really sweet <laughs> it was he, he can be super yeah, sweet I really do yell sweet. at him too though you know I mean you should know I do yell at him he yells at me Right. It happens. Yeah. It happens. I mean, this is right? what happens in a family. It's, it's right. Yeah. Right. And and yeah. I think, you yeah. know, we're whole people. And oh, and yeah. then lastly, no, one more piece of advice. Hmm. If you need help, ask for it. I try to remember that. <laughs> it's really important. It's really, really important. I've gotten better at doing that. Um, I've yeah. had to do that in the past few years. So okay. Well, well, There's thank you so much, Malik. Thank you. Thank you for taking sure. the time to share your stories and your insights with us today. I really enjoyed talking with you. I mean, as always, <laughs> we've talked before. It's, and, it's um, my pleasure, really. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I really hope that everyone in the audience has found something valuable and meaningful to take away from our discussion. It has been a great, great pleasure to have you with us, Melik. Um, before we open the floor to the Q&A, we'd like to share a fun quiz. Uh, we prepared a quiz based on today's talk, and I'll let Tarani take it away. Cool. Um, let me see how quickly I can run this. So you should have already got the link through the chat. Uh, this is my first time running this, so I hope it works. Fingers crossed. If not, we can we can take more time for Q and A. So I'll wait for a while. So if you're on your smartphone, uh, please feel free to scan a QR code or just use the link, or you can just choose the most difficult route, type it yourself and enter the code. Okay, so, oh, I see people joining. Oh, um, the little thumbs. The, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what it means. Yeah, um, so. I'll wait for um, seven more seconds. Hi, Nana, Noku, Go, Yong, San. Eight. Okay, so it seems we have 11 participants. Okay, 12. Okay, more. Great. Maybe this is your last chance to join. Um, just simply click on the link and we'll start in. Okay, <laughs> one drop. Okay, three, two, one, go. Answer fast. Okay, get more points. Ten seconds. Which Japanese word does not come from German? Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see. Boo boo. <laughs> oh, only one got it. So kopu is from Portuguese. Uh, uh, yeah, doesn't from. Yeah, it's from Portuguese. Yeah. Okay. It seems that we got a lot of people to save time. I'm going to proceed. Um, okay, let's see who got the first one. Great. Nice try. Second one. Um, okay, we have 16 players. Let's go. In Australia, the number of the most popular high school foreign language class is Japanese. What is number two? 
just pick one and let's see the results. Oh, it's not Chinese, unfortunately. I hope it's Chinese. It uh, appears to be French. So followed by Spanish, I believe, Spanish, English. Okay, let's see the leaderboard. Cool. And next one. Okay, here we go. How many signatures did they gather during the lobby activity? We had a number for once, so let's see if you still remember it. Oh, yes. Great. We <laughs> are paying attention. Thank you so much. Good job. Oh, my gosh. This is great. I'm so glad to see that. Um, yeah, okay. So the last two are related to Tono Monogatari. So I'm going to proceed and give, um, probably give Melak some time to um, elaborate on the last two questions. So, okay. Fourth one. Some Japanese there. Which supernatural creature didn't appear in Tono Monogatari? If you know what they are, Kappa, Zakiwarashi, Yukiona, and Tengu. Which one didn't appear in Tono Monogatari? Aha, uh -huh, it's Yukiona. Melek, would you like to explain anything about this? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Yukiona, the snow, the snow uh, woman, does not appear. Um, or wait. Now I have to think. Anyway, um, well, Kappa, <laughs> Kappa definitely appear. Um, they are water spirits, and um, cucumbers are their favorite food. <laughs> um, Zashiki Waradi um, are little house spirits. They sometimes are mischievous, but they live in your house. Um, and Tengu, well, they're a little bit different, but um, they are um, goblins, I guess you could say. And um, they, uh, mm, they're not really folk creatures, right? I mean, they come more from, um, from religious belief, um, sort of, I think they're a syncretic product, right? But I would say Kappa, Zashikiwaraji, and Yukionna are um, more uh, folk um, creatures. And many of them make an appearance in Tono Monogatari. And I haven't checked this for sure, but now I'm not so sure that Yukionna is, is right. But sorry about that. <laughs> but I didn't yeah, have time to check. But I'm so check. sure that the red three <laughs> appeared in Tono Monogatari. OK, yeah. let's go to the last one. Check the leaderboard very quickly. Okay, so Stephanie is leading. Um, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, keep it up. Last one. Your last chance. Um, for Yanagita Kunio. Where was he employed? So because the names are longer, you have longer time to read. Agriculture and commerce, international affairs and communications, justice, finance, or Monbusho. Next, which one? Everyone has voted. Oh, I didn't expect that. Is it super? Okay. Okay, it seems that everybody got it. So let's quickly check the leaderboard. Yay, congratulations, Stephanie. <laughs> congratulations. Sorry, no present. <laughs> And we'll jump to a very, very quick q and I'm going to present this slide and pass it on to Mariah. Oh, sorry, forgot to uh, unmute myself. Thank you so much, Tarani. Um, oh, okay, so the first question, um, coming from uh, Heather, I believe, um, her, so her question is, I'm about to start my first classes in Japanese and comparative literature taught in Japanese here in Japan. Do you have advice for students exploring that academic realm in their second language for the first time? 
Okay, apologies. Of course, the garbage truck came right now. <laughs> it's very loud. Um, okay, so I would say, sorry about this. Um, maybe that helps a little bit. Um, okay, so you're teaching, are you teaching um, students who are doing this in their second language. Okay, so it's not Japanese students, correct? Um, if it's okay for me to, um, actually, sorry, I'm learning, so I'll be taking classes, not teaching them. So I'm curious about- Oh, taking them up. Advice for, yes, <laughs> <I> <laughs> for students, no problem. Okay, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I would say that, um, I would say that probably, my guess is most of the stuff that is going to be on your syllabus is translated from other languages. So if you're doing something, if you're reading something by, say, David Damrosch or Franco Moretti, or I'm guessing that there will be a lot of Western critical theory included, you can also just read it in the in the um, original English. Um, because most of it comes from there, I would say. So that that would be my my one tip. Um, actually, it'll be a nice experience, I think, to read those things side by side to see um, how um, how they get translated into Japanese. Um, there is, I believe, a um, comparative. Uh, um, there is a, a crowd of sort of literature scholars in Japan who are doing comparative literature. Um, who's your professor? Um, I'll be working with Fuji Hikaru at um, er, Fuji Hikaru. He actually he teaches Gendai Bunge, but it's pretty much it's a comparative literature department. They just don't call it that. So ah, um, interesting. He focuses on the English for all. He's a literary translator himself as well. So he teaches like translation classes. So it's very he's done. He's like translated a short story collection by Octavia Butler and such. So I'm oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. From him. Right, but I would say obviously the connection there to English language literature and critical theory is very strong, right? So you will, I would, I would advise you to um, to sort of read both, um, you know, the sources that he that um, he gives you in Japanese, and then to find the um, the English versions of those. Um, are you interested in translation in particular? Yes, that is my primary motivation for joining. Definitely literary translation, but I'm also I that that's the world I've kind of been trying to step into and learning about. But I I don't really know much about academic translation, but I would right. be interested in learning. I I know you've gotten to do both, so hearing from you on any of that would also be great. Yeah, I'll be teaching a, a senior level seminar um, in in English um, about literary translation. So I usually. Um, um, and and translation studies, um, so you know, is mostly. I mean, there there's the theory of translation and there's the practice of translation, right? So um, I teach both, um, but I would say that translation studies is a growing uh, subfield in comparative literature, right? And it sort of explores not just the practice of translation, but the the um, ideological and political and cultural sort of um, consequences of and processes of translation. So I think that's probably um, some of the things that you will get in your professor's class. And I, I don't know about advice, but I would say that um, the best advice I always have is when you read something, always look at the bibliography um, to see um, what the the writer is um, drawing on, and that will lead you to further things to read in that field. As far as as far as practical advice for entering the field, talk with people in the you know with um, people who do it. And actually, we have a, um, my friend Avery who is here today. She is in the um, actual professional translation field. So you want to talk to professional translator uh, translators because us eggheads in the academy, um, we don't generally have the full picture. And we um, we usually do translation projects um, alongside our research. And, you know, so it's it's, it's completely different kind of um, uh, 
enterprise than you know earning money and being a professional in the field. Thank you so much. That's really helpful and sure. an interesting perspective. Okay, so uh, we actually have one more question in the chat from Avery, but we're kind of running out of time. Uh, Avery, are you going to stay for the social um, social hours, or maybe you could ask uh, you, maybe you could ask Malik that question yourself during um, the social time in the breakout room? That's fine. Thank you so much, Avery. Um, okay, so. So Tarani, uh, wait, I think Tarani, could you please help us uh, make the breakout room so that everyone can start talking with each other? Yes, thank you so much, everyone. We're going to wrap up. So I believe Richard is going to make a, make the breakout rooms and thank oh, you so yes. much for your time. And you know, yeah, thank you so, so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much.